Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is Decoding Physiology, a series from Decoding DX where we focus on the physiology behind various entities that we see in clinical practice, because we believe that if you understand the why behind these different diseases, then you'll learn for the long term and be able to make better decisions for your patients. This is part two of a multi-part series of metabolic alkalosis. If you haven't watched part one yet, please go back and watch that one first. So we already talked about hypokalemia. That is involved in many different processes, but for most of the pathologies that are causing clinically relevant alkalosis, there's two main problems going on. There's something that is creating the alkalosis and there's something that's maintaining the alkalosis. Some of the major creators are either you're adding bicarbonate to the body, through exogenous or endogenous processes, or we're delivering excess amount of sodium to the distal convoluted tubule in the kidney that is highly reabsorbing that sodium. And we'll get into the details of that later. Some of the major processes that maintain an alkalosis include a low volume state inducing excess reabsorption of sodium bicarbonate in the kidneys, low affected bicarbonate excretion, or a continuous process that just keeps the loop going. So now let's talk about the next step. We already talked about hypokalemia. The next thing to evaluate for is for GI loss of acid. And this can come from either vomiting or from excess NG suction. So let's first walk through some normal physiology in the GI tract. Starting in the stomach, one of the main cells of the mucosa is the parietal cell. A key reaction of the parietal cell is catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase. And this combines water and carbon dioxide to create acid or hydrogen and bicarbonate. This is a really important reaction that we're gonna see repeated throughout this entire physiology series. The hydrogen ion and bicarbonate are then pumped out into opposite sides of the cell. The hydrogen is pumped into the stomach lumen and the bicarbonate is pumped into the blood. Meanwhile, down in the pancreas, we have the same reaction happening, but it's going in the opposite direction. The bicarbonate is being pumped into the pancreatic lumen, and the hydrogen ion is being pumped into the blood. This free hydrogen being added to the blood, in effect, neutralizes the free bicarbonate that was added earlier on by the stomach parietal cells. As a side note, this is also where we have the CFTR channel that lets chloride into the pancreatic duct, and this is why we can get pancreatic problems with cystic fibrosis. And then moving further down into the duodenum, secretions from the pancreas are sent through the ampulla of water into the lumen. The bicarbonate that was created in the pancreas then neutralizes the acid that came from the stomach. So the hydrogen ion from the stomach lumen is neutralized by the bicarbonate from the pancreatic lumen. And the bicarbonate that was sent into the blood by the stomach is neutralized by the hydrogen ion that is pumped into the blood from the pancreas. Now let's move on to some pathophysiology. In a state of vomiting and NG suction, the normal process that we just talked about gets disrupted. So starting off where we started the first time in the parietal cell, we have the same reaction by carbonic anhydrase creating the hydrogen ion in the bicarbonate. The hydrogen goes into the stomach lumen and the bicarbonate goes into the blood. This creates the high level of acidity that we know is really important for digestion in the stomach. But in the case of vomiting or excess NG suction, we are losing some of that acid out of the body. At the same time, vomiting means that there's less acid that ends up in the duodenum because whatever's in the duodenum comes from the stomach. This results in neurohormonal signals that tell the pancreas to slow down the production of bicarbonate to match the lower levels of acid in the duodenum because we want them to match. But back up at the parietal cell, the acid creation is still happening. We're still pumping that free bicarbonate into the blood. But with that free acid being vomited out of the stomach, some of the balancing acid is lost out of the body despite the bicarbonate being sent into the blood. So stepping back, bird's eye view in summary, how does vomiting and NG suction create alkalosis? Starting off in the stomach, we have the creation of the hydrogen ion or acid and the bicarbonate. Normally, this would go to the duodenum, but instead, in the case of vomiting and NG suction, some of that free hydrogen is lost out of the body. But the free bicarbonate is still absorbed into the blood, and it's not neutralized by the reciprocal free hydrogen from the pancreas because the duodenum is telling the pancreas that, hey, there's less acid coming through. We don't need to make as much. 
And so the reaction happening in the pancreas that is critical to balancing the effects of the stomach is not happening as much. So we have a net absorption of bicarbonate into the blood without a parallel amount of hydrogen to neutralize it. And then the second component is that there's something going on to maintain this alkalosis. In the case of vomiting and NG suction, we can just have a continuous process. If you have something making an alkalosis and it just keeps going, you're just gonna keep creating the alkalosis without giving the body time to adjust. Secondly, that vomiting typically leads to fluid loss and fluid loss leads to volume contraction. If we have the same amount of solutes in a given fluid body and we decrease the amount of fluid, it's gonna increase that concentration. And that happens with bicarbonate too. If we have the same amount of bicarbonate and we lose some fluid, that's going to increase the concentration of bicarbonate in our blood. Finally, vomiting also leads to hypokalemia because we lose some potassium out of the vomit as well. We already talked about this in part one of the series where hypokalemia will lead to a compensatory action that will further maintain the alkalosis because of a decreased concentration of hydrogen. Here are important references for this part and join us next time for part three where we explore the next cause of alkalosis.